For quite some time we have heard the phrase you have to throw some shots and some games on the ball so to break it in or to develop a track and then supposedly the ball will uh, settle down to its proper true uh, behavior let's say. Well that always sounded unconvincing to me uh, even though I wasn't sure why. I mean what would be the point of doing that if uh, as soon as you apply even one pad and you resurface the ball then that track is gone again then what you you have the you just ruined your ball reaction again well each time i resurface a bowling ball or apply uh, some surface which is often uh, i don't see that and besides, why would the lane, which is much shinier and much smoother than a bowling ball, create some track on the bowling ball, some indentation, let's say? These kinds of questions made this uh, proposition uh, unconvincing to me. And now I think I know a, bit, a little bit more. might have heard this about some uh, urethane type balls like the Hammer Purple Pearl a very famous bowling ball that you have to play to throw a few shots to play a few games to break it in I even heard this from I think he was uh, a Brunswick employee and he said that you have to get some oil on the ball or in the cover stock before it behaves normally, as it will normally do in the future. Well, how is oil going to go inside the ball when the ball is a non-absorbing cover stock? When I recently drilled mine, I didn't notice that. Yes, when the ball is new out of the box or you just resurfaced it, on the first couple of shots it is going to hook more and actually I made the first worldwide video about this on this bowling ball, the purple hammer where I threw one game and scanned it shot after shot so you can watch exactly how the surface is changing you can watch it over here on the link or in the link in the description below it's very good, it's very good yeah. Yes, very good. On that video you can see that exactly the first two shots are different from the rest of the shots. There was a significant change in surface and then the surface changed much more gradually. So does it have anything to do with the track area? Unlikely. Most people say that uh, you need uh, several shots or a few games for the track area to form and for the ball to uh, for the cover stock to stabilize, let's say. Which means that this uh, breaking in idea doesn't seem to hold water with uh, balls, with urethane balls or with balls like the purple hammer or with balls that in general don't even absorb oil. But what about bowling balls that are reactive resin and do absorb oil? Well, a couple of days ago I drilled my Hammer Obsession Tour and I played in practice three games. So three games, I cleaned it and I have never touched the ball. So it was out of the box, didn't resurface it, played three games, cleaned it up well and it's now here, ready for testing. Moving on. So, after three games, I should have developed a track on this bowling ball to the left of my finger holes, right? You can even see my flares here. I, I track very close to the fingers. I think you can see here various lines. So, even visible to the naked eye, right? Okay. But, but what is this thing? Is it 
an area where the ball is smoother, is it rougher? How, di how is it different than, say, this part of the bowling ball that never touches the lane? If we were to assume, we would assume that this part, this track area, should be smoother than the rest of the bowling ball, because that part uh, comes in contact with the lane under the whole weight of the bowling ball, right? This is what most people assume, that these footprints of the ball, these contact areas of the ball with the lane, get, get more compressed by the weight of the bowling ball. So, the teeth of the ball should be getting smoother here than what they are here. Well, whatever it is, it certainly means that, according to this break the ball in idea, that uh, whatever happens here creates some difference with whatever this part of the cover stock has. Okay. I don't know what difference it could be, but there should be some difference according to this idea. Which means that the teeth of the ball, the peaks and valleys of the ball, should be different here on this part that touches the lane than this part that doesn't touch the lane. Which means that we should be able to see it with the laser scanner. Will we? Huh? Huh? Well, let's see if there is something there or if it is just another misconception. Okay, so we're going to compare what the scanner shows on this part of the ball compared to what it shows on this part of the ball. So we're going to scan it like this. Okay? Okay, so, this part here where you see this line moving is where we have the specific grid of that point. You can see that because here we have the letters, we have all these very, very low grid lines, very, very many positions, many points that the grid is very, very low because of the of the logo. As you can see there are, there are not many differences in this part of the of the ball with the rest of the ball. We see that pretty much the ball is all around has the same more or less grid. Let's try another scan. Trying to avoid the letters here as much as I can. This is, is the Hammer logo here. Now we're crossing into track area. This is all track. This part. And uh, even here and here we are away from the track and it's it's pretty much the same. Actually, even here, that is a little bit lower, it, it isn't even in the track area. It's to the right and uh, lower side of the thumb. So, I mean, is there a difference from this part? To this, not really. Let's get back to the to the red to the to the previous scan. 
Let's do it again and check a few things, a few other things out. Okay, if you remember, these are the letters here again, which are in the front. Here we have the hammer, here we have the tour logo, here we have nothing. Okay, so if I compare this part that doesn't touch the lane with this part, there are really no differences in grid. But let's also compare the height of peaks and valleys, which is the RA value. Okay, so here, this part is the track area. This part are the letters. So track area, and now we're going to leave the track area and go to the right side of the fingers. And as you can see, we are on the right side of the fingers, and there's still nothing. So this part of the ball that doesn't touch the lane, this is again the, the tour logo. This part is the same as this. The peaks and valleys are practically the same. Let's also check their distance, the distance between the peaks and valleys, which is the RS. Here we are on the non-track area, and here we're going into the track area still in the track area. You see they don't seem to have any correlation. But the most significant is the array because that's, that shows the actual teeth of the ball. And there's, I mean I can't see, I would expect, if that idea of the track was that you have to break in, or that this is uh, this cover stock, this part of the cover stock here is somehow different. Um, I, we should see here a difference in the RA values than here, for example, or here. But there isn't any. So, pretty cool, right? So, what we had was that we saw something very interesting that. We have something visible to the naked eye on the bowling ball, on the track area, and yet there seems to be negligible or zero difference from the rest of the cover stock that doesn't touch the lane. Disclaimer, I'm not a chemist or I don't have a, a degree of chemical engineering. I'm just a curious bowler that uh, reads a lot and wants to learn. So, from what I've witnessed myself on the lanes and from what I've read and know about cover stocks and now from what I see with the laser scanner my initial conclusion is that uh, this track area settling down breaking in story is uh, either a partial or a total misconception now I hear you thinking uh, but uh, Demos what about all these people that are actually seeing some difference in the behavior of their bowling ball when it's uh, first used for a few shots or a few games. They can't be all uh, seeing wrong, right? I mean, there's probably something that people are seeing with their behavior of the bowling ball and this is the way they interpret it. Well, from what I've seen by scanning various bowling balls on various states and situations and experiments for a couple of years now, that change in behavior that people interpret as breaking in or settling down is the quick surface change that occurs on any bowling ball, especially raising bowling balls, just by usage. When you will use our bowling ball, it gets shinier and shinier. Most people do not realize how fast this is and once the ball reaches a certain grid number 
it stabilizes. This is what you might have heard as lane sign. Keep an eye out for a future video on lane sign and uh, I'm going to do a very nice experiment to actually prove why ball involves lane sign and uh, I've already done videos a couple of videos about uh, how fast some bowling balls lane sign and you can uh, check them out as well if you like. So the bowling balls reach a certain grid number, they stabilize and then their behavior is the same. And then the guy says, oh now my ball has broken in, has, has settled down. And this happens both for dull bowling balls and shiny bowling balls. The dull bowling balls are going to get uh, shinier until they stabilize and the shiny bowling balls are going to lose some of the shine and again stabilize and both of them are going to stabilize on around the same uh, grid range which is determined by what shines the ball when we throw it of course as always i'm going to follow up on this experiment and uh, scan again some new bowling balls and some resurfaced bowling balls and i'm going to verify if I keep seeing the same thing with the scanner. But for now, until I see new evidence, not opinions, not feelings, not perceptions, evidence, just as I'm showing you in this video, I will for now stand by this, this conclusion. Well, everyone, that's it for today. I hope you found the video interesting and if you want to help me make more of these videos you can consider donating with the links in the description. Please also share, like, subscribe and hit the bell icon. Hit it. See you on the next one. Bye.